Hey guys, Luke here with the Catfish and Carp YouTube channel. Today I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about throwing cast nets. But we're also going to talk about the anatomy of cast nets, the basics of cast nets, how to choose the right cast nets, and some real great tips and tricks for catching more fish with your cast net. So down in the video description, I'm going to have links to each one of these topics so you can jump ahead if there's only part of this discussion you're interested in. So let's get started. All right guys, first let's talk the anatomy of cast nets. We're gonna get the lingo down. This is the leash. It's the rope that connects your arm to the cast net. Next, we have the horn. It's the little plastic circle at the very top of the cast net. Mesh sizes can be measured two different ways. There's square mesh and stretch mesh. Square mesh is when you measure the distance between one knot and the next knot. Stretch mesh is when you measure the distance between opposite knots when the mesh is stretched. Stretch mesh is always twice the distance of square mesh. So this mesh size is one inch square or two inch stretch. The length of a cast net is almost always measured by radius, which is the length between the horn and the leads. Diameter is twice the length of radius. There are some overseas companies which will sell cast nets by diameter, not radius. But most people, when they say a net is 10 foot or eight foot, they're talking radius. When people talk about the weight of a cast net, it's pounds per foot of radius. And typically cast nets are 0.75 to one and a half pounds for every foot of radius. All right, let me talk to you about the two ways a cast net catches fish. One, it ensnares them in their gills and fins the same way that a gill net does. And two, it is surrounds and entraps the fish. When a cast net hits the water, it hits flat, but then the lead on the edges of the cast net sinks faster than the middle and it forms an upside down bag. The fish get trapped under that bag and when the leash is pulled tight, the mouth of the bag is closed and the fish are surrounded and trapped inside the cast net. Sometimes fish can swim out from underneath your cast net before you close the mouth of the cast net. Other fish will try to swim through the mesh and get tangled up in their gills and fins and will not be able to escape. Understanding the two different ways your net works is important in using your net and picking the right net. Let's talk about picking the right net. Obviously, bigger cast nets will generally catch more fish, but only if you use them correctly. Often I'm tempted to try to throw a really big net, but bigger isn't always better. The biggest drawback is weight. The larger the net, the more it's going to weigh. So to make sure you don't purchase a net that's too heavy for you, here's a good rule of thumb. Can you deadlift it with your elbow straight? This is a 10 foot, one pound net. So it weighs slightly over 10 pounds. And you can see, I can lift it and hold it quite easily with my elbow straight. You should be able to lift your net like this six to 12 times without too much trouble. If you can't do that, your net's probably too heavy for you. Once you've figured out the maximum weight you can handle, next figure out how many pounds per foot you need on your net. The more weight you have, the faster your net will sink. And the faster it sinks, the less opportunity the fish have to escape out the bottom. If you're fishing deep down, you're gonna need as much weight as you can handle. The general rule of thumb is that if you're fishing between one to seven feet of water, you can get away with 0.75 pounds per foot. If you're looking at seven to 15 feet of water, one pound per radius foot is good. If you're fishing deeper than 15 feet, you're gonna want the full one and a half pounds. If you're trying to use a cast net below 30 feet, you wanna look into specialty deep water cast nets. Now keep in mind, it's not the depth of the water that matters, it's the depth that you're fishing at that matters. Even if you're in 100 feet of water, if the fish are at the surface, you don't need a heavy net. So once you've figured out the maximum weight you can lift and the pounds per radius foot that you need, you can back calculate the maximum length of net that you can handle. I can comfortably lift 15 pounds. And with my fishing conditions, I generally use a one and a half pound per radius foot net. So you take 15 pounds divided by one and a half pounds per foot, that equals 10. A 10 foot net is the ideal net for me. Just because you can throw a 10 or 12 foot net doesn't mean you should buy a 10 or 12 foot net. There's lots of reasons that a smaller net is better. The number one is cost. Smaller nets are cheaper. 
And especially if you're fishing in snaggy areas where you tear and lose a lot of nets, you don't want to invest a lot of money in a 10 or 12 foot net. Additionally, if you're throwing cast nets from shore in fresh water, you're constantly dealing with snags and brush and having a smaller net will allow you to slip in to tighter locations. Additionally, smaller nets are easier to throw so you can get more distance and more accuracy. So if you're throwing a cast net from shore, a smaller net is a lot better. Additionally, if you're throwing a cast net from like a kayak or a small john boat, having something that doesn't require you to, to throw with all your weight allows you to maintain your balance a lot better. Additionally, check your local laws. A lot of states have regulations about the maximum size of cast net that you can use. When picking mesh size, it's important to remember the two ways that a cast net traps fish. One is the fish try to swim through the mesh and they get tangled up in their gills and fins like a gill net. And the second is that the net sinks and surrounds the fish and encloses them in like a bag. If you have large mesh size, the net will sink faster and do a better job of enclosing and encircling the fish. Too large and the mesh size will allow the fish to swim through the net and escape. If you get a mesh size that's too small, the fish won't attempt to squeeze through it and they won't tangle up their gills and fins and the net will sink slower and give them more opportunity to escape. So those are the two factors that you're balancing when choosing mesh size. And for each size of fish that you're targeting, there is an ideal mesh size. So I have a net for large shad, I have a net for chubs, I have a net for bluegill. Each type of fish that you're targeting, there's an ideal size of mesh. If you're targeting open water bait fish like herring and shad and skipjack and moon eye, the general rule of thumb is that a one inch fish requires 3 16 inch square mesh. And a nine inch fish requires one inch square mesh. You can kind of calculate from there what the ideal size is. So just to give you a nice comparison, this is 3 16 square mesh, and this is one inch square mesh. All right, the technique I'm gonna demonstrate for you guys is really simple, it's great for beginners, and it works for nets from about sizes four foot all the way up to 12 foot. There's lots of different ways to throw a cast net, but what's unique about this method is that it doesn't involve throwing the cast net over your body or holding it in your teeth, which is important because those techniques will get you very wet. This is a great technique for staying dry and it's a great technique for beginners. And if you fish in the winter time or in the fall like I do, staying dry when you're getting your bait is gonna be a big deal. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is attach the leash to your throwing arm. With Fit Tech nets, they have this elastic neoprene band, goes on nice and simple, very comfortable. For traditional cast nets, you have this loop on the end of the leash and you reach through the loop, grab the leash, pull it through and make this little noose. You put your wrist in, cinch it up, and there you go. Next, you're gonna to wanna to make loops with the rope. You wanna make them consistent, neat, and tidy. Next, you're gonna pick the net up by the horn, work your way down, and you wanna make sure the net is not twisted, tangled, ripped, or has any sticks or debris in it. Then you're gonna pick up the net and balance it like this to try to get the tangles out. You wanna grab the net at about waist height and put it in your throwing arm. So all the loops and the net at waist height are all in your throwing hand. You're gonna spread the net out. You wanna look and make sure that you have two curtains of net and that nothing is tangled. Taking your time and inspecting your net carefully for tangles and snags is really key. And when you're excited and trying to throw on fish, don't skip this step. Then reach in and grab half of the lead. And you wanna grab the lead halfway between this hand and the lead. So you're grabbing half of the lead halfway and transfer that to your throwing hand. Then you're gonna have two curtains of lead. You're gonna have the outside curtain and then you're gonna have the inside curtain. You wanna grab the outside curtain and you put that in your hand. Now this is where the technique changes depending on the size of your net. If you're throwing a small net, this is all you need to do. If you're throwing a larger net, reach down and grab another handful of curtain and add that to your hand. If you're throwing a massive 12 foot net, you're gonna do that a third time. So with my 10 foot net, I generally just do it twice. Additionally, if you're having to throw over the rail of a pontoon boat, 
you can choke up a little bit and you can grab this net a little further down than your waist and you can compensate by picking up one extra curtain. Then reach down and pick up the final amount of net and you're ready to go. This is your throwing position. You want your lead foot pointing at whatever you're aiming at and you're going to take your throwing arm and you're going to cock it back behind you like this. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to swing this over in a kind of a broad sweeping motion. It's kind of like throwing a haymaker. Throwing hand comes in and you're doing this exaggerated curving motion. You're trying to get the net to spin so that the centrifugal force will open up the net. Your other hand, your non-throwing hand, is holding the curtain and it's coming along like this. So on smaller nets, this motion is more exaggerated. On bigger nets, it's almost like all you're doing is just holding it stationary. You're barely moving it. One thing to be careful of is where you aim. You want to aim down and out and not up in the air. If you try to throw the net up, it'll open up and then kind of spring back closed a little bit. This is especially a problem with smaller nets. You want to time it so that the net opens up to its maximum right as it hits the water. And you do this by aiming out and down slightly. The technique is almost identical with smaller nets with just one small variation. When using smaller nets, I'll only put one handful of curtain into my throwing hand instead of two or three like I would with a 10 or 12 foot net. Then I just hold it like I would the 10 foot net and throw it exactly the same. All right, let me show you that throwing technique again at full speed. Coil the rope. Next, grab the horn. Grab it waist height. Grab half the lead. Grab the outside curtain, make a loop. Grab the outside curtain, make another loop. Grab the outside curtain, you're ready to throw. You can see my throw wasn't perfect. I'm only about 85% open, and it's kind of squampus a little bit on this side, but, but that's okay. Consistency is much more important than perfection. I would rather have a net open halfway all of the time than have it open up perfectly only some of the time and then flub it the rest. It's much more important to be consistent. You don't really care if it's perfect. Just get it to open up. Once you've learned to throw the net and get it open, now you need to learn how to catch fish with the net. When it comes time to pull that net closed, do it aggressively. Don't give the fish a chance to escape out the bottom. Pull the net up out of the water by the leash. Once you get your net out of the water, you want to dump the fish out by grabbing the horn of the net and lifting the net by the horn. This will cause the fish to shake out and drop on the ground. But some of them might be tangled in the net. If they don't come out after you shake the net up and down a couple times, then you're going to have to get in there and pick them out one by one. Most of the time you do this by pushing the fish forward through the net. If the mesh is past the fish's gills, there's really nothing for it. You've got to go forward to get out. If you're trying to catch live bait, the less you handle them, the better. So a good trick is to have a bin or a live well and take the net out of the water straight into the live well and dump the fish out into the live well rather than dumping them onto the deck of your boat and then putting them in the live well. When it comes to catching fish with a cast net, where you put your cast net is the most important factor. It's more important than the size of your net or whether you threw it all perfect and pretty or not. Location is key. And when I say location, I mean your horizontal location and your vertical location. Getting the right depth is super important. Now, if the fish are jumping on the surface, it's easy. You throw the net and you let it sink like one second and then you pull the net closed and haul it in. The fish are right there at the surface. But if the fish are down deep, it's a little bit trickier. You've got to make sure that you pull your net closed as soon as that net encompasses the fish. If you wait too long to close the net, the fish get a chance to swim out. If you pull your net too early, it closes up before the fish get inside. So timing when to pull that leash and close your net is extremely important. You need to know how deep your net is. So take your leash and mark every five feet on your leash with a Sharpie or a piece of tape. And then as your net sinks, you can keep track of how deep it is. And once your net gets to the right depth, then you can pull the leash and close the net. When you're trying to catch fish that you can't see at the surface, using a fish finder is really important. 
what you do is you drive around until you see a nice big school of fish and then you immediately turn the boat left or right and do a 360 so that your boat comes back to the exact spot you were when you saw the fish. And you'll be able to tell the spot because that's where the bubble trail of your engine will suddenly cut to the left or the right. Then what you do is you really quick throw your engine in reverse and just kind of jog it in reverse for a brief second to bring the boat to a complete and quick stop. Then throw the net right on that spot where you saw the fish signal on your fish finder. You want to be really careful trying to use a cast net to catch fish that are near structure or down on the bottom. If there are any snags around, you're going to get your net snagged up, you're going to tear it, and you're going to lose a lot of nets. That's why cast nets aren't very good for catching bullheads and bluegill and other fish that like to be in snags and rocks. Generally speaking, you don't want your net to touch the bottom unless you're confident there are no snags on that bottom. Well, hopefully these cast net tips will help you catch more fish, but if you guys wanna see more fishing videos where I use and demonstrate cast nets, check out the links in the video description. I've got tons of videos like that. Also, don't forget to click subscribe. We put out new fishing videos every Saturday morning. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.